we got more Tower of God content. This one is T Tower of God's Ending Explained, the finale to the prologue. Let's check it out. Every single storyline that we saw in Season 1 was simply intended to lay the foundation for what's to come. Yep. These past 13 episodes and the 79 chapters they prologue. covered was essentially a giant prologue with a lot of moving pieces. And isn't Villain Saga just the same? Isn't Villain Saga like, yeah, Season 1 prologue and people think it's like the best telling of a fictional story ever. And then it like... It doesn't fall off, but like obviously a lot, not a lot of people are gonna like you know Farmer compared to the prologue. But the prologue of TOG was pretty good. I'd say season one was fantastic. A lot of people say like season one is a ruined adaptation from like really hardcore webtoon enthusiasts that say like it's too rushed. A lot of details are cut out. But as an anime only coming into this, I felt like I understood everything I needed to know. And even if there's minor details here and there that could have obviously gone more depth. Would that have really changed my perception of the story? I don't think so. By watching cut content like this, I can appreciate more details, but I thought season one was fantastic. Like, minimum 8 out of 10. Yes, there were the world-building elements like Shinsu positions and the tower, but more than anything, there was a lot of different stories going on at the same time. There were. All of which finally converged in these last two episodes. So, to give everything a little more context and wrap things up neatly, Let's go through each story element of the finale as it was portrayed in the webtoon. Let's that get way, it. if season 2 ever does come out, you'll fully understand why Bum's in the position that he's in. Now, but first, I'm sure you're wondering no where this different styled Tower of God anime scene came from. Oh, uh, we're about to get an ad. We're about to get a Tower of God mobile gaming, baby! Skip, oh, 35 to 2 minutes? Yeah, this is just 2 minutes. <laughs> it's just so lovely, just... I, out of context character designs doesn't really matter too much for me. Unless they show me like a bomb in like awaken Susano fog mode. I don't know. That that would ruin it, right? If you saw like known characters have like new forms, new different like, I don't know, powers, that would be a spoiler, but alright, let's skip that shit. Season one can be split into the following main storylines. Jerry's journey to the floor of test, Rachel's desire to climb the tower, Bomb's devotion to following her, Anuk's revenge. Yuga's secret mission, and finally you and Huaryun working behind the scenes to manipulate everyone else. And I think that last piece right over here, Huaryun and Yu Han Sung's master plan, that, that pretty much is like the master puppeteer. I think everything else is very like trivial. Everyone thinks that they're so important, but at the end of the day, Yu Han Sung and Huaryun's Zert plans, they've been puppeteering everything behind the scenes, making it seem like everyone else was acting according to their own like beliefs and ideals when at the end of the day they were all just being controlled behind the scenes to manipulate everyone else out of all of these the most important to understanding the big picture is actually rachel's mm. her story of putting her dreams above all else is what came first it's why she ended up betraying bum and is closely Whack. related to how you was oh oh, oh wait, 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 wait. someone mentioned in the anime episode of season two remember what they said about um bum's new drip the patterns Fog Slayer design. Look at the wall here. Slayer design. Bro, this dude straight up has like, like terrorist themed drip all across his building and no one asked the question. I guess Leto's never seen a Slayer. I guess like Quant, hell, Quant definitely has it, but like, not a, he just has this shit just out for everyone to see and no one questioned it. How Yu was able to put his plan into action. In fact, Bam wouldn't even be in the tower if it wasn't for Rachel's selfish desires. So it makes the most sense to focus on her story first. I guess that is when true. Rachel first entered the tower on her own, she very quickly came to the realization that she wasn't the one chosen to climb it. That's right! I wasn't the king, just like King Baro realizing now nah, Baro is a king. Rachel, Rachel was not the one. So like, the interesting thing is, People keep questioning, and I'm not sure if it's confirmed, whether or not Rachel is an irregular, because, like, what is the sequence of events? <laughs> Bum and Rachel, somehow, they, start, they run and they fall over each other. They start panting in a weird way. And then, the gate opens, and Rachel starts to disappear. But, like, is that not the tower choosing Rachel? Because the explanation is, no, 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 that was actually supposed to be Bum. He opened the tower, and he was supposed to be the one to enter. But for some reason, Rachel was chosen. Was that a bug in the system? Was it simply because they were so close together that the tower AI system, whatever, chose Rachel thinking it was bomb? 
I, I, oh, excuse me. I, I don't know. I don't know. Hedon wasn't waiting for her. He was waiting for the true person that the tower chose. That person being Bam. But then why did Rachel get in there? Why would the tower make such a simple mistake as that? I... I just don't get it. Of course, Rachel refused to accept that the starting point of her dream was also now the end. She whined and complained to head on, only to be met with a barrage of insults as to why she was unfit to climb the tower. <laughs> How ugly, nasty, and bad you are. These are not my words, these are SIU's words, and SIU, the author, didn't explicitly state that of all the girls in TOG, he made Rachel the ugliest? You see, Hedon already knew from the beginning now you're gonna say, what about Serena? I don't think Serena's bad, but like, there is like an actual comment from the author himself. Maybe someone lied, but I thought it's pretty much confirmed that the author himself explicitly said, I made Rachel into like a dislikable looking character. Getting how nasty of a person Rachel was. It was very clear to him that she was a person filled with deceit and envy. A person who lacked the ability to do anything for herself. Mm. Someone who could only rely on others in order to mm. get what she wanted. Leech! So, the only way Hedon would allow her up the tower was if she could pass his test. It was the very same ball test that Bum was given. But Rachel, being the coward she is, only saw this test as a death sentence. She couldn't fathom it as being something that was possible to her. Instead, she just chose to believe that it was Hedon plotting against her because she wasn't the chosen one. But Hedon didn't really care what Rachel's issue was. He was only concerned with the fact that Bam was about to arrive. Mm -hmm. So Rachel Hide. was cast aside, then yep. forced to watch the events of episode 1 happen- Enjoy your cock chair, yeah that's right. Watch Bam succeed, live your dreams out! Right before her eyes. She witnessed every moment of Bam doing what she simply could not. As she yelled and screamed for Bam to stop, Hedon only became more and more amused as he <laughs> knew that this girl would be someone he could easily manipulate. So, after Bam had courageously beat the eel and ascended to the next floor, we're confronted by the duality hey, of our two main characters. Like it or not, Rachel is a main character, and she's actually the person that we're intended to relate oh. to more, oh. when confronted with a situation that puts her life at risk. Yeah. I whether, or, whether you like it or not, it, 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 you gotta accept it. She is a relatable character, though. That, that is true, right? If, if you're gonna pick any character in this show, and if anyone can relate to them, it's definitely Rachel because she has all these negative qualities about a human. Envy, greed, deceit, cunningness, you know, stuff like that. You know, not being good enough, you know, seeing other people live their dreams and seething and being mad and all that shit everyone can relate with, right? Nope, not a lot of people can relate with Bomb. I don't think so. I think Bomb is such an, he's, an, he's like a main idealized character, like a godlike figure. No one can relate to that. But Rachel, for sure, I can give you that risk, she reacts in a way that's much more fitting to that of a normal person. Not everyone can be as heroic as Bam and charge into a situation of almost certain death. Many people would hesitate just as Rachel did. So as Bam acted exactly like how you'd expect a normal shonen protagonist to, Rachel found herself to be left behind in his shadow. She was now experiencing that exact same feeling of abandonment that she only just recently left Bam with. That's on you! That, but she was also exposed to her own personal flaws. By using Bam as a direct comparison, Hedon made Rachel realize just how unfit she was to climb the tower. He painted a picture of Bam embodying everything that Rachel was not. It served to change those feelings of inferiority into ones of jealousy and envy. And that's all Hedon wanted to do, so it's easier to control and manipulate her. So by the time, you know, she gets to that stage near the end of season one, Yuhan Sun can simply manipulate her into doing exactly what they want to do so we can smuggle Bam and train Bam to be like a fug slayer, right? That is the entire premise of season one. So, like, if you think about it, from episode one, all of that was being set up. Yuhan Sun was like the Aizen of this show already, already in contact with Head On. Like, this is crazy. How could this person who didn't even want to climb the tower not only make it farther, but also be the very person chosen to do so? And this is a very interesting uh, thing in life where there's a saying, talent often goes to those who don't want it. Rachel wants this the most. Bam doesn't care. But Bam was given everything and more. And Rachel has nothing. And that is like a lesson that I think a lot of people have met in life where 
you might love this one sport, this one academic, one game, and you grind and grind, but you just can't be as good as that one friend who doesn't even care about it, right? And you think that everything is so unfair in life, and you're right. Life is very unfair. To Rachel, this made her feel like everything she'd ever desired had just been snatched away by Bum. This was the moment that Hedon was waiting for. He now had the opportunity to present Rachel with an offer that she couldn't refuse. Mm -hmm. Up until now, Bam had unknowingly taken on the role as the main character to this story. And as much as Rachel wanted it for herself, Serena, no. she was completely powerless to do anything about it. So what Hedon was offering was the opportunity to steal it back. Even though it was something that would come at Bam's expense, Rachel had no problem accepting it if it meant Ugh. that her dream could come true. So, after accepting the deal, Rachel was sent to the second floor along with her new ghost. friend, Ghost. OP she item. was then greeted by Yu, who was given instructions by Hedon to take care of the rest. The rest being the whole plan revolving around- I wonder who the master is here between Hedon and Yu Hansung. Because here, Eni just said, Hedon gave Yu Hansung rest of the instructions, so it sounds like Hedon is actually Aizen and not Yu Hansung. I'm not really sure there. Bam. It's here that we find out that Yu was made well aware of Bam's power as an irregular from the very beginning. Though we don't know the specifics, we do know that he was conspiring with Hedon and Hua Yun to use that power to his advantage. Mm -hmm. Before that could happen though, a lot of things needed to be set in motion. Things that could only be possible by following the instructions of a guide. This Navigator. was much more than guide. just a title though. The guide was a very special position that only a specific Dude, that moment when they crossed each other for the first time. Two guides, two navigators, bro. Like, it's like, whoa, what is Hwadion? And then her identity got released. It's like, what? A specific species of people within the tower could have. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Species? A guide, wait. The guide was a very special position that only a specific species of people within the tower could have. What? Silver dwarves like Eben and red witches like Hwadion. Uh, species? Silver Dwarf. So Evan's not short just to fit the masochist dream of being stepped on by Yuri, but like, he's an actual Silver Dwarf. Okay. Red Witches, and they can be the only guides in Tower of God. Silver Dwarves, Red Witch. Got it? Is like Hwa And I honestly can't stress enough how important guides like them are to the overall story. They just know Reason everything? that they have the unique ability to find the optimal path through whatever situation. Not in terms of just deciding the roads would go left or right, but problem-solving abilities that ascends anything. Give a context, give a problem, a game, a maze, anything. A guide will just figure it out? It's a very powerful analytical skill that borders on straight-up foresight. As you himself describes it, since foresight. they have the ability to know all possible paths, they can essentially predict and change the future. That's bro. what? I'm surprised King Zahad isn't doing like, like extermination on like genocide on the races to make sure like no one can use these guides to potentially, you know, usurp him, right? Because right now they're being used to like go against you. So they know all possibilities. It's like Doctor Strange kind of shit. It's like, yeah, I know all these different paths and this is the one that we're going to pick to make sure Bomb is a fog slayer. It's a power that stems from their talent to read the paths of others. They can see the route that someone else is most likely to take, or intervene and guide them. Can they see their own paths then? That's another interesting thing with people with these kind of prescience like power, right? Like, could they then... They... Probably not, right? I wonder. Because like, with those kind of powers, like, I... who's deciding the future? You are, because you, ch you see all these destinies, but is that destiny in itself? Could you then decide to change the outcome? This is getting way too deep. I don't know. ...them down a path of their choosing. Now, although it wasn't directly shown, guides have been very prominent throughout the entirety of Season 1. A lot of what went on during the hide-and-seek test was implied to be a direct result of Wadi Yoon's interference. Yeah. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if everything before and after this point was because of her guidance as well. Yeah, probably. In fact, there's even a scene in the webtoon before the final test where Yu admits to Bam that everything was part of his plan. What? Making Bam give up the crown, getting Ho to take action against- What? In the, we in the webtoon? He already leaked? But like the whole premise of like end of season one and beginning of season two and Bam's motivation right now is climb so that you can get the answers on why you got pushed off. 
Well, I don't know if Yu Han Sung said here, like, I made Rachel push you, but ooh, ah, this, this seems really like a huge... Well, maybe the anime took a different direction to give Bum, like, a reason to keep going forward. I don't know. Making Bum give up the crown, getting Ho to take action against Rachel, and even not completely healing Rachel's legs so that Bum would have to take the administrator's test. I love these guys, man. These multipleized octopus looking dudes. Remember? They're like a really cool casual species. They're like one of the first people we ever met. And we thought they were a danger, but they just stood there. And now they appear in like, they're like doctors, they're like chefs, they're like nurses. They're like, um, like if in the 20th floor as well, they're, they're everywhere, bro. They're just chilling. I love them. They're just existing and chilling. Rachel's legs so that Bam would have to take the administrator's test was all things that you made happen. But really, these were probably all ideas from Hua Yun. This was all part of her job of being Rachel's guide. Much like how Rachel's job guide. Is to guide Yuri, Hua Yun became tasked with guiding Rachel shortly after she was sent to the second floor. Guide to... Yeah, I guess she did help and Rachel did succeed. But at the end of the day, we wanted, she wanted that to happen so we could get bomb. She was ordered to lead Rachel down the path that would result in her becoming the heroine to this story. So that meant getting rid of Bum. What Rachel didn't know though was that Yu was planning something a little bit different. Mm. To Rachel, that mm -hmm. didn't really matter though because all Rachel was ever concerned about was being able to climb the tower. And in the end, that's exactly what she got. Just as had on promised, Rachel was now the centerpiece to this story. Regardless of what she had to sacrifice on the way, Ugh. every one of Bomb's friends was now dedicated to getting her to the top of the tower. She had Are finally they? taken back what- Are they though? None of them suspicious? Like, definitely Blue Turtle. Blue Turtle definitely a little bit suspicious about that, right? Bomb had stolen from her. Even Rack. I, I hope that Rack's intuition can feel something is off. And Dorsey's. Please, somebody. The beginning. And just like in episode one, Rachel was leaving him behind yet again. But that's not where this story ends. Rachel's may be done for now, but Yu's plan was only just beginning with yes. Bomb being pushed out of the bubble. Now they you can see, train as this the kid. the director of the floor of test, Yu had to maintain a certain appearance the entire time. He needed to make it seem like the final test was administered in the fairest way possible. Sure, so it was by fair. having the administrator dictate the rules of the test, he was able to pass the entire thing off as if it went according to the orders of a higher power. That way, no one would suspect the thing if something like Bum's death was to happen in the middle. All of it. part of the plan. Everything would seem like it was how the administrator intended. At least that's what Yu was hoping for. But as we learned during his final scene, Yu's end goal was to make it seem as if Bum had died here on the floor of test. He wanted to completely remove this irregular's existence yes. from the eyes of Jahan. Yeah, we're smuggling as him. As for why he wants to deceive the rulers of the tower, well... Wait, 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 what do you mean eyes is a hot here? Hold up. I, 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 I... Are you saying, like... Existence from the eyes is a hot, right? And, and basically, we're trying to hide from the king that, you know... Bomb is dead. The irregular is gone. Don't worry about it. But it's making it sound like Zahad has his eyes always. Like, they're always observing. The eyes of Zahad. I know it's a symbol, but like other people like Ren. Ren is like another eye of Zahad, right? Anyone affiliated is like a, an eye of Zahad. They are, they're always monitoring. Rulers of the tower, well, that's something that we don't find the out. The princesses later. as well, exactly. What we do know is that he was conspiring with Hadon to make this happen. Yes. And he's currently working with Hadon. And Ivan Kill too, right? Hadon and Ivan Kill. The whole tutorial test floor has been corrupted by Fug members. For Yun to follow through with it. But before we get into those final moments with Hua Yun and Bum, there's still a bit more that needs to be said about the other storylines. Mainly with regards to Yuri's as hers converges with Anux and Ren's. Okay. As we already know, Yuri's team had been spending the majority of Season 1 trying to get to the floor of test. The thing is, they were trying to be very discreet about it. They did- Yeah, Yuri's just fucking around. She's straight up a super senior right now. She's like, oh, this new kid is cute. I'm gonna stalk him for the rest of the season. That's all she did. Just straight up think about what Yuri was doing. She just started chasing off their mom. Didn't want Evan Kell to know that they were intruding on her floor. But this was something that Yu was expecting. He already knew that Yuri's team was coming to intervene, likely because of Hua Yun's abilities as a guide. Got it. So Foresight. as different members of Yuri's team start showing up during the middle of the test, that's when the other stories begin to get intertwined. Blue Turtle Lamare family. is confronted by Miss Ice Strawberry and her partner. Kun Miss gets Ice his Strawberry. lighthouse hijacked by another member of the Kun family. Yeah. Yuri goes to interfere with the whole assassination plot, and Evan goes to meet the test director. 
Evan arguably had the most important role because he had to explain why he was on the floor of test in a way that wouldn't get Yuri in trouble. What happens when a guide versus a guide, like, like, Hwadion can see the different paths and chose that one path to make Bama Fug Slayer? To Evan, that possibility never even arose? Like, if you're saying a guide has foresight powers to determine all these different possibilities and choose the most optimal one for their cause, shouldn't Evan be able to also be aware that this possibility exists? Maybe it's a difference between Red Witches and Silver Dwarves? They are slightly different? Hmm. <laughs> well, that's like a... That's like... Sounds like Red Witches are just better than, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Like, what? what, what what's Evan doing? Evan's like, Oh, do we go left or right here? Hmm. And then he spends like a whole episode. They're like, all right, we go right here. And then Hwadion is like, beep boop, beep boop. I foresee 1,700,332 different possibilities. And we will choose this one with the most optimal rate of success. It just feels like red witches are just superior compared to silver dwarves. You see, if Evan Kell was on the floor of test, then she probably would have killed every member of Yuri's team. Really? That's just how strict she was about her rules. And we still haven't seen Evan Kell yet. Like, where is this person? She's never shown up. Lucky for them, it was just you. But the way that the final test was being administered didn't quite make sense to Evan. He was aware that one of Jihad's assassins was currently intruding on the test, Ren. and that was something that Evan Kell most certainly wouldn't allow. So Evan was trying to use that as the basis for Yuri's intervention. Since the test was already messed up from the beginning, there should be no problem with Yuri stepping in to retrieve the Black March. It was an idea that Evan was expecting you to oppose at least a little bit. But instead, he simply let it happen, all hmm. because of the single reason that this test was one given by the administrator. This made Evan believe that the test was going exactly how the administrator had <laughs> planned. Everything from Ren's assassination attempt to you. That is so convenient to just say, yeah, it's all according to plan because the admin says so. Don't even question it. Yuri's intervention was supposedly part of the test. Sure. You was even able to use this reasoning to prevent Yuri from interfering any further. Once her job with Ren was over, so was the extent to which she was able to assist Bam. This was Yu's natural style of fighting. Rather than use his own power, he prefers manipulate. to manipulate others to do the fighting for him. Bro should be in Classroom of the Elite right now. I want to see Yu Hainsung in Classroom of the Elite Season 3. Four, sorry, Season 4. Season 4. All while personally gaining in the process. In this case, he basically took out Ren and deceived Yuri's team without having to so much as leave his room. Now, the way that he... Maybe Yuan Sung is my favorite character, season one. I don't know, I just... The moment everything started to click as we got near the end of the season, and the more that we started theorizing, like, oh my god, is he actually doing this? Is he actually doing this? And then episode 13, the POV from Rachel and Yuan Sung, it's just... Oh, it's just so peak, bro. It's so peak. It's a... I think he's a really well-written character. Nothing like that anime, Tensai Oji, where... He's the only normal one, and everyone else is, you know, just has an IQ of a room temperature. This dude was genuinely smart. Genuinely smart. Can just manipulate everything behind the scenes, just sipping his instant coffee bowl thing. What a character, bro. What a peak character. He got Yuri to back off in the anime was a little bit different than how it actually was. But the main... His only fault. The one thing that he cannot control, right? Is his height. Bro is like five foot nothing. That's that's the one thing that Yu Hansung doesn't have, right? He's got everything. He's got the androgynous, feminine, just like sexy look. He's super powerful. He's giga brained. He's got he's dripped out fug member. He's great. And then he's like five foot two. It's like oh oh, you can't have it all, you know. Point is that Yu was able to get Yuri to leave the floor of test. Had she stayed, then Yu's plan to make it seem like Bam had died wouldn't have played out nearly as well. Anyway, with all the third parties now out of the way, all that was left was for Rachel to push Bam out of the bubble. The thing is, if Bam was actually dead, it put into question whether everyone else would pass the test or not. You see, one of the conditions of passing the test was that both Bam and Rachel had to be alive by the end of it. A what? But that actually wasn't the case after all. Prior to taking the test, Bam had come to an agreement with the administrator. Yeah, he had the test. In the case of his death, then every person would pass the test regardless of the results. It this is a test I was confused about because this is the one where he took it on behalf of Rachel and Yu Hansung planned it because King Zahad did the same thing in the past before, but this is just skipped immediately. 
and it was just setting the conditions of the test. I thought there was like a deeper meaning to this one. Of the results, it made everyone feel as if they were now indebted to mom. And what better way to repay that? Rack scream here. I remember that man. That oh, you could just like feel the despair and the the emotional turmoil the entire group was going through with this scream. Better way to repay that debt than to use it to fulfill Bam's wish. Everyone now felt that they had a personal obligation to take Rachel up the tower, Ugh. once again marking Rachel's shift to that of the main character. Ugh. And none of this would have been possible if not for the assistance of her guide. Ah, but, with... but why do I still love you? I think I do. She's still cool. Even if she did that for her, it's all still part of the plan. Just, just, just believe, guys. Just, just believe. Like, think about the amazing revenge plot of all of this being set up, and Rachel think that she got away with it. But Bomb is coming. He's coming, baby. And the twentieth floor test, he's going past that. And with Mr. Princess Zahad, this Mr. Pokemon Master, we gonna find our group. And when they see us, they're gonna be like, "That's not Bomb. He's got long hair." Uh, what are we gonna do about that? With her job with Rachel now complete, Hwada Yoon could now begin her next one with Bum. This brings us to the final scene of season one. Yeah. As Bum lay at the bottom of the pit, he couldn't understand why it was that Rachel betrayed him. He was filled with emotions that he'd never experienced before. But as he was in this moment, the only thing that he wanted was to know why Rachel did it. Yeah, because she wanted to be the star, and then Hwada Yoon here says, the answers. Or at the top of the tower, you better climb. But it's like, no, y'all, y'all manipulated this poor boy. It was an answer that Hwardi Yoon couldn't provide, but she could guide him to a place where he could find it. It was in a place. You can't give the answer. Why she put? Why she pushed them? Right? Yu Hansen gave her the tools to do that, right? All that setup was there. But I guess like the thought process, what we saw in the POV episode of episode thirteen of like. Her wanting to be the star. Head-on kind of knew that, right? Who was it? Was it Yu Hansung or Head-on that explicitly said that, like, Oh, you wanted to go fight a stars? No, you wanted to be the star. Head him to a place where he could find it. It was in a place where all other desires are found. A place where anyone's dreams can be realized. At the top of the tower! A place that we only know as the top of the tower. Yeah. Bringing us to the end of season one. Peak. But, yeah. That's the main explanation behind Season 1 of Tower of God. Of course, there's a few extra things to note, like the recurring theme of the 77th floor. But those are things more- Oh yeah, meet me on the 77th floor. You will go see Urek Mazino there, was it? She gave him the feather, the wing, of the tattoo of Urek's back. So I'm gonna assume he is on that floor. Bid it to be covered as I finish my cut content series. Yeah, <laughs> Shibisu got the invitation here, bro. Shibisu got the fucking invitation to Urek Majino, bro. Yuri is the hot princess chose Shibisu chosen one. As I finish my cut content series. So if you enjoyed this video and liked seeing all the details behind Tower of God, then yeah. be sure to check out my other cut content videos to see what exactly the anime missed out on. Oh, trust me, we didn't. Goddamn, were you spoiling? But hey, we figured out a way to, you know, avoid those spoilers by finishing the season and then checking it out. Guys, please go to Mr. Anius's channel. Give him a like on his videos. There's still a couple other videos that I want to check out. It's like, um... There's like more lore related ones. So for example, it's like you know, all the positions explained or what is Tower of God and why is it so up and stuff like that. But that's it for me. You guys can expect him. I'm sure he's going to do cut content for episodes as well for season two. So you guys are going to be eating more Tower of God content.